What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to put a Raspberry Pi inside of your Arcade 1UP cabinet. Well, I'm going to show you exactly what I did to put a Raspberry Pi in my cabinet, and you can follow along if you'd like. Now before you even go any further, I did have to add extra buttons because the Raspberry Pi really requires a select button for player 1 and a select button for player 2. Some people might not want to modify their cabinet in this way, but what I did was drill two extra holes in the control panel. Now you could always drill them on the side or the bottom or even the back of the cabinet so they're not shown, but you will need to add a couple extra buttons or switches. Now I look at these cabinets as toys and I didn't want to put a lot of money into a toy, so I use cheap USB encoders and cheap buttons. You can always go high end if you want, but I really wouldn't recommend it for a cab like this. Before we get started, we'll definitely need a few items. First thing on the list, we'll need a Raspberry Pi. Now through this whole list here, you can substitute for cheaper items or more expensive stuff. This is just what I used. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a Flirt case. The case acts as a heat sink so I don't need a fan and it keeps it really cool. You're also going to need an SD card and a power supply. Now I recommend using a 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply. All links for everything I mentioned here will be in the description below. You can get them all on Amazon or eBay. Since we're going to be using the stock monitor that came in the arcade one up, we're going to need some way to convert it to HDMI. These are known as LCD controller boards or LVDS controller boards. Now I happen to get mine on Amazon, but I believe they're sold out since I made the initial video, but you can still pick them up on eBay and I'll leave a part number in the description also so you know exactly what to look for. This will convert the stock LCD inside of the arcade one up to HDMI, VGA or DVI. I'm sure there's other ones that will work with the monitor inside of the Arcade 1UP, so do your research if you're not going to get this exact board here. The only two parts out of this kit we're going to be using is the controller board and the settings button board. So we can plug this into the controller here, we can control the color, we can open up the menu, contrast, power on, power off, and we can even switch inputs from here. In fact, some of these are actually sold on eBay with a remote control, so you could control everything from like a TV remote. The next thing I suggest getting is a full arcade button kit. This comes with all the buttons we're going to need and two joysticks. The joysticks in the arcade one up cabinets are not great quality. They are made out of plastic and after about a week of messing around with it, you might have to take it apart and rebend the springs out in order for them to work correctly. These are very cheap on eBay and Amazon. They are not the best quality but they will work with the Raspberry Pi. And don't let anybody tell you that these are complete junk because they are not. You might run into some people who had trouble with them. They don't feel as good as HAP or Sanwa buttons, but they work fine with the Raspberry Pi. The USB encoders that are included with one of these kits are perfect for the Pi. We're not trying to put all name brand parts in here and spend $500 on our control panel. We're trying to get out as cheap as possible because the cabinet in general is very cheap to start with. You're also going to want to get a hold of a small amp. These are about $10 to $15 on Amazon and eBay. It also comes with its own power supply. You can also add an extra speaker if you'd like. And it's going to sound great in a small cabinet like this. And finally, a few extra things I use for this build. A power strip, some zip ties, a Phillips head screwdriver, an X-Acto knife or something to cut with. And finally, we're going to need a way to drill those extra holes for the extra buttons. Now, I use a step bit here. This goes to 1 inch and 3 eighths. But you can also find a 30 millimeter hole saw or 24 millimeter, depending on what buttons you're putting in there. And if you have a local Harbor Freight near you, these step bits are pretty cheap and they come in really handy if you're doing any kind of arcade work on arcade sticks or cabinets. All right, so let's go ahead and get the LCD monitor converted to HDMI before we start anything. We wanna make sure this works because this is the main component to this unit, the LCD screen. We're just gonna pull the main board out of here. Underneath this little panel is what powers the Raspberry Pi. It's a very low end single board computer. It has a one gigahertz single core processor with 256 or 512 megabytes of RAM. The board itself also has the LCD controller built in. So all we're gonna do is pull it off the back here, unplug the LCD connector, the power to the LEDs, and we're also gonna need to remove this ground. Now that we have the old board in the trash can, it's time to get to work. 
we're gonna grab our new LCD controller. There's a spot here for the ground. You will have to source a little nut and bolt by yourself. It doesn't come with these kits or anything like that. We're just gonna take the ground from the LCD panel and place it right on the board here. Put the nut on, tighten it down, and we're grounded. Now we need to plug in the power connector for the CFLs inside of the monitor. I'm pretty sure this is a CFL and not a LED monitor. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in right here to this port and the LCD itself. There's a little 30 pin header right on the board. It's gonna plug directly in here. And if you look very closely, all the red wires are to the far left. This kit does come with a little option board or a settings board. I don't know exactly what to call it. It's got an on and off switch, a menu button, and things like that. It's gonna plug right in here. Now all we need to do is mount all this up. You can use double-sided sticky tape or screws. Just don't mount it directly to the metal plate on the back of the LCD. As you see, I have it down here on the wood. I have double-sided sticky tape on the back and it works perfectly like this. The LCD controller we just installed requires 12 volts, and luckily, the stock power supply that came with your arcade 1UP cabinet works fine with it. Before we move any further, let's go ahead and test this out, make sure it is working with the LCD. I'm going to plug in my Raspberry Pi. You can plug in anything that has HDMI. It should show up on the screen as long as everything is connected correctly and the LCD controller is working. So yep, I got picture here. We're running from the HDMI port on my Raspberry Pi to the built-in LCD on the Arcade 1UP. Time to modify the control panel. So I have opted to switch everything out here. The buttons are okay. They use very cheap micro switches inside of them. But the joysticks are pretty horrible in here. It's an all plastic design. They do have micro switches, but they're not the best. The cheap Amazon knockoff Sanwa arcade sticks are better than the ones in here, and that's what I'm going to be using. Bought that whole kit you saw at the beginning of this video for $40, and it works great on the Raspberry Pi. So when we pull this control panel off, I'm sure you've seen this because you built your own, we're going to have this cover. We're just going to take this cover off. You can always put it on later on if you want, but we need to get access to the buttons in here. So luckily, we don't have to desolder anything at all to take everything out of here. It's all plugged in up top. So you theoretically could use all of the stock buttons and sticks with a USB arcade encoder. Now the buttons will plug right in, but the joysticks are set up a little differently. They have two connectors on the end instead of a single connector. But I opted for all new buttons because I actually have to add one button for each player. So we'll need an extra button for player one and an extra button for player two. So each button will unplug from the board up top. You're just gonna squeeze the little connectors on the side. If I can squeeze them correctly, we'll push them right out of the top. Each button will do this, you can pull it right out. These will plug into a USB arcade encoder, but it's just easier to swap everything out. Now we'll just remove the sticks. We're gonna unplug it from the board. Make sure you remove the ball top from the other side. Unscrew all four screws and pull it right out. Here's the fully clean panel. Now I did leave the speaker and the on and off buttons. We're not even gonna mess around with those on and off buttons for this build. We're gonna keep this stock speaker in place because we're just gonna plug this directly into the amp we're adding. You could find a connector for this or you could just lop it off if you know you're never gonna use it again. That's what I'm gonna do, I just cut the end. So I went with these longer screw type buttons here because the panel is pretty thick. Now I could have used real Sanwa buttons. I got a bunch of them laying around. I have more than enough to complete this, but sometimes they pop out of the top. Here's the Sanwa and as you can see, it's very short. It's not gonna lock properly in place. This is a stock button from the arcade one up. The screw type LED buttons that I have right in the middle are the ones I'm gonna be using and they're gonna be perfect. Basically, any 30 millimeter button should work in here. You're just gonna throw it in. Since I'm using the screw type, I'm gonna tighten it up, and that's it. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I was gonna add two extra buttons to this control panel. I did that by drilling two 30 millimeter holes with a step bit right here. Now they're 30 millimeter, you can use a 30 millimeter hole saw or pick up a step bit like this from your local Lowe's. 
If you're afraid of damaging your control panel, you could always drill a hole in the arcade cabinet itself, or you could use a smaller button. A lot of these kits come with a few extra 24 millimeter buttons. It might be easier to drill a smaller hole. But the main reason I added two extra buttons was for a select for player one and a select for player two. With RetroPie, it's good to have those extra buttons. We can set them as hotkeys also. All of the buttons are going to be connected to these USB encoder boards. Now you can always go all out and buy an iPack for 60 bucks if you want to, but these are cheap and they get the job done with the Raspberry Pi. I already mentioned it once, but I have to do it again. You do not need to go out and buy a $60 to $100 encoder board for the Raspberry Pi. These cheap boards here are actually six bucks a piece if you buy them separately and they're gonna work just as well. If you're building an emulation PC, that costs a lot of money, go with more expensive parts. We're emulating all this stuff on a single board computer that costs 35 bucks, buy the cheap encoders. Here's a quick look at the included arcade sticks that come in the arcade 1UP units. They are completely plastic, they weigh nothing at all, and in my opinion, they are junk. For reference, here's the cheap sticks that came on my $40 arcade button kit I'm putting in here. You can just look at it and tell it's higher quality. It's a Sanwa clone. Now they don't fit exactly here, so you will have to drill four more holes. Really easy to do. Put the stick down, line it up, mark your holes. Before you go drilling anything, make sure you line it up from the front. So you're gonna put it in, check the front, make sure the stick is directly in the center, mark your holes, drill a tiny pilot hole, and then put the screws back in. It's really simple to do. Just take your time, Triple check that everything is lined up correctly before you start drilling. Moving on to button wiring, depending on the kit you get, it could be a little different. Usually when you buy a kit, they do have some kind of manual, either digital or that comes with it. So this is an LED button kit. There are four pins on each button. Two of them are for the LED, two of them are for the switch. When you're wiring up a double pin button, it doesn't matter. It is not polarity sensitive, so you can put the red on the black or the black on the red. It really doesn't matter. All this is doing is bridging the two wires together when you press the button. Now for the LEDs, it does matter. These are polarity sensitive. You will have to put the positive where the positive goes and the negative where the negative goes. Best course of action? Follow the manufacturer's instructions or find something similar online and find instructions for that. These are screw type, so I'm just going to put it right through. I'm going to grab the plastic holder or plastic nut, whatever you want to call it. Screw it right on the collar. Make sure everything's flush so the button stays in place. One thing to remember about using two of the same encoders with a Raspberry Pi is you need to wire up each side. If you have a one player and a two player, they need to be wired exactly the same. So for instance, if that's our A button, we're gonna plug it into port one. We also need to plug the A button from the other player into the same port on the other board. If it's not wired up correctly like this, sometimes if you switch the Pi off, it will get mixed up and some of the buttons on the second player will be mapped to the first player. Wire each button to each encoder to the same exact spot. The way you mount your encoder is up to you. I'm just going to use some double-sided sticky tape. Works fine for me. You can put it on top. Just make sure you have enough wire lead to reach each and every pin. You may have to move this around or wire everything up and then mount it in a spot where you're not stretching wires out. And again, you need to wire both sides up exactly the same. So like I said, let's pretend that this button here is my A button for player two. Now I'm going to plug it into the very end of the encoder. And these don't have to go in a specific order. They just need to be exactly the same on both sides. You're going to map these controls later on. Now I'm going to move over to my player one. I'm going to locate that same exact button, which is going to be this button. I'm just calling it A for this video. I'm going to plug in my lead to that button on player one, my A button and I'm gonna plug it into the exact same port that I have it plugged into over on my second player encoder. I'm gonna do this one more time. We're gonna call this our B button. So our B button on player two, I'm just gonna plug it into the switch. I'm gonna plug it into a port on my USB encoder. I'm gonna move over to player one, find that same B button
I'm going to plug in my lead right to the switch itself, not the LED, and I'm going to plug it into the second port on my first player encoder. So we now have button A and B on both sides plugged into the same port on each encoder. I'm just going to go over the LEDs real quick for this unit here. All kits are created differently unless you got the same kit I have here. So it comes with a daisy chained LED connector. You would think that the one marked with the red paint is positive, but it's not on my kit. It's actually the negative. So black's going to go where the red paint is. Red's going to go where there's no paint. We're going to do that all the way down the line. And this in here plugs right into one of the red ports on your encoder. That's just going to light the buttons up when the encoder's powered from the Raspberry Pi. I'm sure there are tons of videos on how to wire up a USB encoder on YouTube. If you have any trouble at all, go ahead and search for one. I'm sure there's something out there that can help you. So I have everything wired up here. This is my long USB to my Raspberry Pi. It's going to plug in right to that port. I did end up having to move my encoders around like you can see. I did mention you might have to fiddle around with it. As for the volume and power button, we're not using this at all on this cabinet. We're using the stock speaker. Everything's wired up. The USB plugs that plug into the encoder boards will plug into the Raspberry Pi. Both new buttons in place. This is where I drilled the holes. Got all the LEDs and connectors plugged in. It's time to connect everything up. And all right, so let's go ahead and install everything. These are our two speaker wires that will be going to the amp. You can extend them if you'd like, but I'm gonna be setting my amp here and they'll reach fine. First thing we need is a power strip. I'm using a cheap $3 power strip from Walmart. I'm just gonna double-sided sticky tape it to the bottom of the cabinet. These are our two USBs for our encoders. I have marked one with a zip tie to know that it's player one. The amp that I'm using in this build comes with a 12 volt power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. We wanna mount the amp. Now you can mount this stuff anywhere you want as long as the wires reached. This is just how I did it. So I've already placed some double-sided sticky tape on the back of my amp. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my speaker. I'm not sure which one is positive or negative. You can switch it around later on, but either way will work. It might sound a little weird if it is swapped around. I'm just gonna mount it to the side right here. I didn't have to extend those speaker wires at all. I'm gonna need to plug the power in to the amp. I'll grab that 12 volt power supply I already have plugged into the power strip. Plug it right in. And now we need to grab our 3.5 millimeter audio cable there is a 3.5 millimeter jack on the amp and one on the controller board. We're gonna plug it in right here and we're gonna plug this end in into the amp. The Raspberry Pi is gonna send audio and video through the HDMI and we'll get audio out of the board to the amp. Now it's time to mount the Raspberry Pi in here. Same thing, I'm just gonna throw some double-sided sticky tape on one side of it. I'm gonna mount it right underneath the amp. Now it's time to connect our HDMI. I'm gonna plug one side into the LCD controller board, and I'm gonna plug the other side into the HDMI output on the Raspberry Pi. Now we need to grab the USBs that are connected to our USB arcade encoders and plug them into the Pi. I have one marked with a zip tie, so I know that's player one, and when you plug these in and start configuring your input, Player 1 might be detected as player 2, so you will have to swap these USBs around. Now it's just a matter of plugging in all the power. This is for the Raspberry Pi. And we'll also need the stock power supply that came with your Arcade 1UP system to plug into the LCD controller board. After all the power is connected, we can go ahead and plug the power strip into the wall and boot the system up. Now I will be going through here with zip ties and cable holders to make everything look nice, but for now we need to make sure everything works. So we got everything connected. Go ahead and turn the whole unit on. I just plugged the power in, already had the power strip on. You're going to start booting up here. Now this is a custom splash screen I created. You can make it in Photoshop, GIMP, or even Paint. 
If setting up a Raspberry Pi isn't your thing, I do have a tutorial coming out on putting a Pandora's box in here. Everything's already pre-set up for you, you just need to wire up your buttons. So as you can see, gamepad 1 detected. I'm just going to set it up like normal. Now you can set these buttons up any way you feel. That's how I put mine together. And when we run out of buttons to press, we're just going to hold one we've already mapped. It's going to skip through till the end, and we need to set up a hotkey. So we got player one set up, now we need to set up player two. And if you ever run into any issues where both controllers are kind of doing the same thing or interfering with each other, remember you need to wire up those encoders exactly the same. And if that still doesn't work, you can always go into RetroArch and map them individually. Now it's time to test out all the controls. Make sure you do bolt your control panel back down. Make sure everything's right before you start putting your screws back in because you may have to rewire, you never know. Since this is a Street Fighter cab, we're going to go with a Street Fighter game. This is Street Fighter Alpha 3. Need to put some coins in for the first player. I'm going to do that by pressing select, or whatever button you map to select. Press start. Got the first player up. Throw in some coins for the second player. Choose my characters. Just testing out both players. Make sure all my buttons are working. So both encoders are working independently. They're not interfering with each other. Got a two player control panel working here. Wanted to test one more before I get out of here. X-Men versus Street Fighter. Alright, so it's working fine. Hopefully you can get one of these up and running. Like I mentioned, if you're not into the Raspberry Pi, we'll be doing a Pandora's box tutorial very shortly. Now you're still going to need that LCD controller board to add HDMI or VGA for a Pandora's box to work with this unit. And there's also a bunch of different versions of the Pandora's box. I have a real JAMA Pandora's box 6 and I also have the box stick version of the Pandora's box 5. So whichever way you go with the Pandora's box, I got you covered there. A lot of people have been asking me about the XU4, and yes, it will work. This has an HDMI input now. Only thing I'm concerned about is the encoders working properly with the XU4. I haven't tested it yet with the latest release of ORA. I guess I could go ahead and flash an SD card and give it a shot. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you can get a Raspberry Pi or a Pandora's box in your arcade one up if you want to mod it. If not, I completely understand. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button, maybe think about sharing the video, and subscribe to the channel. All links for everything that I used in this video are in the description, but I can't guarantee that they'll be in stock because usually when I do a video like this, everything sells out really quickly. I'll try to find as many suppliers as I can, and like always, thanks for watching.